Hey guys, what's happening? Lee Burkhardt here with Brief Photo and Video. And today I have a little surprise for you all. Well, you guessed right, the Nauticam Komodo housing for the Red Komodo 6K camera is finally here. So on today's episode, we're gonna be discussing all the new features of this housing with you. What we like, what we don't like, additional gear you should consider adding, and more importantly, what kind of benefits this equipment offers for underwater filmmaking. Now, before we jump right into it, a quick news flash. Just in case any of you have been living under a rock this past year, binge watching way too much Netflix or eating way too many pints of ice cream. Who, me? No. No, that totally hasn't been me at all. So Red Digital Cinema has announced and started shipping an all-new cinema camera called the Komodo. What's most interesting with this camera is its size, weight, and more importantly, price. The camera measures just 4 inches by 4 inches, weighs just 2 pounds, and has a price point of just $6,000, making this the most affordable cinema camera offering that Red has ever produced. It's no slouch on features either. It's built around a Super 35mm sensor with 6K full sensor recording at 40 frames per second, 4K recording at 60 frames per second, and 2K recording at 120 frames per second, all of which are recorded internally to CFast 2 cards using Red Code RAW. Combine that with its compact size, lightweight, and a $6,000 price point, and you have yourself a really compelling camera choice for underwater filmmaking. Now I'm not going to dive into all the features of this new Komodo camera on today's video, but stay tuned on our channel here as we will be uploading a new video soon covering everything that you need to know along with some underwater footage samples for you all to check out as soon as we've had a chance to get some time diving with it underwater. The housing itself is totally loaded with all kinds of features to enhance any underwater filmmaker's experience, so let's get started by taking a closer look at those. The housing controls are simple and well thought out. You have access to all of your essential camera controls directly off the left and right handles. From the right handle, you have controls for things like on or off, menu or back, select and function, the menu navigation keys, record triggering, and the zoom knob. From the left handle, you have controls for focus and the drop-in filter EF to R lens mount adapter. More on this in a moment. Installing the camera is easy, and you can literally set up the entire system in just minutes. Simply move both rear housing latches into the unlock position, remove the camera tray, and attach the tray to the camera. Next, bolt on the right side control bracket using two thumb screws. Now the housing comes with two left side lens release brackets. If you're using the Canon R lenses, attach the smaller bracket shown here. If you're using Canon EF lenses through a Canon EF to R lens mount adapter, attach the larger bracket shown here. Place the assembled camera and tray back into the housing and lock it into place. Reattach the rear of the housing, and then move both rear housing latches back into the lock position. Attaching ports is also made simple, thanks to Nauticam's patented port locking lever. Simply move the port locking lever into the release position, align the dot on the port to the dot on the housing, push the port into place, and then move the port lever back into the lock position. There's also a lens release button integrated into the housing to swap lenses directly from the front without having to remove the camera, making lens changes in the field quick and painless. As for your lens choices, the housing is built around Nauticam's N120 port mount. So you have the entire Canon EF lens line to choose from, with solid choices on everything from wide angle to macro. 
With the feature update from RED, you'll also have access to the Canon R lenses, and we expect Nauticam to support these going forward as well. Full zoom and focus support for all of these lenses are provided by Nauticam Cinema Gearing, with dedicated cinema style knobs located along the left and right sides of the housing for precise adjustments to both zoom and focus underwater. The housing is also compatible with a wide range of Nauticam's water contact optics. The SMC1 and SMC2 make excellent choices for all of you super macro imaging fans, and are amongst our top recommendations thanks to the superb image quality, contrast, and color that they provide. Nauticam's WACP and WACP2 are also great additions, as they provide an incredible 130 degree field of view, excellent image quality, and sharpness and when paired with the right lens, can provide a very versatile option for capturing wide, medium, and close-up shots all during the same dive. We have several articles and videos available on all of these optics, and I've included links to all of this content in the video description below so that you guys can check that out. Nauticam's moisture alarm electronics are included, by the way, along with their vacuum electronic system. This is a great pre-dive check feature, as it provides some peace of mind that you've assembled the entire kit properly, and it's safe to dive before you enter the water. The housing is loaded with quarter 20, 10 millimeter, and five millimeter threaded mounting points for attaching a whole variety of cinema accessories. Ball mounts can be added along the top for mounting accessories such as lighting or monitors, or even along the bottom for something like tripod legs. The cheese plate design along the top is actually one of our favorite features, as you can add quarter 20 accessories such as NATO rails, top handles, and other third party accessories that many of you may already have. A pair of skid rails are included with the housing by the way, and these are a great tool for keeping your nice new housing from getting banged and scratched up out in the field. And they also feature a weight integration system that allows you to attach slidable weights to the rails for easy adjustments to fine tune the trim of the housing underwater. On that note, there are also several other trim weight mounting points located all on the tops and sides of the housing too. Nauticam includes a series of M16 bulkheads that can be used for routing an SDI signal from the camera up to the surface, using either of their 15 meter or 45 meter surface cables making this combination perfect for studio work. Those same bulkheads are used for connecting underwater external monitors, such as the small HD 502 Bright. These monitors make a great addition for any underwater filmmakers, as they provide a larger, brighter, five inch screen for viewing, and are absolutely loaded with all kinds of assist tools, such as focus peaking, false color, waveforms, and many more that'll really make your job underwater so much easier. For those of you looking for a more compact form factor, Nauticam has also released a special monitor back for the Atomo Shinobi. The Shinobi is a lightweight, HDR-capable field monitor, and similar to the small HD 502, is also loaded with assist tools for focus, exposure, and framing. This combined with the Nauticam monitor back gives you a true all-in-one housing design, and keeps the entire camera rig relatively compact and streamlined in water. Now if you're curious in learning more about these monitors or the surface feed cables, we have a whole bunch of content already put together that discusses all of this in more detail, so be sure to check those out in the links below. Now as I mentioned earlier, the housing features a command wheel for controlling Canon's drop-in filter EF to R lens mount adapter, which has an integrated ND filter. This is a huge benefit for underwater filmmakers, as you can easily apply a variety of ND filters for different lighting scenarios to film with a desired aperture, all while underwater and without having to open up the housing. For power, the RED Komodo accepts Canon's BP955 and BP975 batteries, and the housing will support up to two BP975 batteries for extended run times. More importantly, these batteries are accessible through the back of the housing without having to remove the camera, making battery swaps in the field really easy. Now it's important to note that for those of you using the Shinobi monitor back, only the Canon BPN55 batteries can be used to allow enough space inside the housing for the Atomo Shinobi monitor with its own batteries. 
The only real objection we see for some customers is going to be the size of the housing. We were hoping to see a smaller size housing ourselves, along the lines of the Nauticam NAE2F, which we just recently spent a lot of time with. As you can see, it's nearly identical in terms of size compared to the Nauticam DSMC2 housing. That being said, others may actually appreciate the larger size of this housing, due to the additional buoyancy and in-water stability provided by larger housing designs like this one. So I'd say it really depends on your shooting style and preferences. But as you can see here, it's still more than capable of being configured into a relatively compact form factor. And of course a more built out rig, complete with things like an external monitor, video lighting, and skid rails. Overall, we're thoroughly impressed with the Nauticam Komodo's design, and I hope today's video has been useful for any of you considering picking up this gear from us. Now if you liked today's video, you'd like to see more content like this from us, or if you're just curious in learning more about underwater imaging, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons found below the video here. Hey guys, it's like right, right over there. Yep, there you go, just move your mouse, click like, subscribe. There you go, you did it. Good job guys, good job. Seriously though, any support is really appreciated guys, as we're trying to grow our video channel here and be in a position to keep cranking out all kinds of new content for you guys to watch. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments section below or just contact us directly. And to check out some of our knowledge base articles or other content, you can visit us at www.reefphoto.com and just click on the Learn tab on the top of the homepage. Well guys, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more cool videos to come soon, and I'll see you on the next one.